When we started Willow Creek Land and Cattle, we'd already seen some pretty compelling evidence from our mentors that rotational grazing could positively impact ecosystems in California. But we felt like us just kind of seeing or reporting that we saw positive impacts on the ground wasn't enough, particularly for like people who might be a little more skeptical of grazing as a management tool. So we wanted to like be able to prove it. So that's kind of where the SARE idea came from. We wanted to be able to show with data that our grazing was having a positive impact. Uh. I'm Liz Duncan. I'm co-owner and operator of Willow Creek Land and Cattle, LLC. We're based on the central coast of California. We graze cattle on two private ranches, Pinnacles National Park and Mid Peninsula Open Space District. My business partners are my brother, Matt Rykowski, and my husband, Blake Duncan. So my brother, Matt, and I started Willow Creek Land and Cattle in 2018, uh, back before I knew Blake. I was 22 and Matt was 21, so we were very young. Our project was testing whether targeted rotational grazing was effective at promoting native plants and controlling invasive plants on ranches on California's central coast. We set up the experiment basically by creating pairs of grazed and ungrazed study plots. So each ranch had four plot pairs where each pair consisted of a grazing exclosure and then immediately adjacent to it, an area that was freely accessible to cattle grazing under the rotational grazing program. Targeted grazing just refers to the idea that we're trying to uh, intentionally accomplish a goal with our grazing, primarily an ecological goal. We've done pasture sizes as small as one or two acres and graze cows for like a day and then move them. And we've done pasture sizes up to like 80, almost 100 acres, just because it was rugged terrain with only one water source and that's what we were limited to. The rotational aspect of the grazing allows for a lot of recovery which typically means that even in a drought year, you'll have some like good regrowth and be able to like bank some feed to get you through the like very long dormant summer and fall season where nothing's growing. One of the biggest potential economic benefits of the targeted rotational grazing that we wanted to explore is what sort of land does it give us access to and what sort of like grazing agreements does it open up for us. So our idea was, well, if we can demonstrate that our grazing approach has legitimate ecological benefit, then maybe we're better positioned to negotiate grazing agreements with agencies and private landowners where we don't have to like pay an arm and a leg to rent this land because they know that we're bringing benefit. And therefore can negotiate for lower lease rates or even for landowners to pay us for, for grazing. It kind of flips the whole economic model on its head for traditional ranching. Across both the two private leases that we collected data on, grazing was very successful at promoting increased cover of native species. In particular, native forbs, which are like wildflowers. By the last year of the project, native forb cover was almost 50% higher in grazed plots than ungrazed plots. We also collected data on oak woodland regeneration. So before we started the SARE grant in 2018, we had done an initial oak regeneration survey on Pinnacles Ranch. In 2021 with the SARE funding, um, we went back and we found that there was significantly more oak seedlings than we had found in 2018. So our hypothesis was that by controlling all of the like annual grasses and forbs, grazing was creating like some more space and light and less competition for those oak trees to germinate. Because we are aware that cows do eat oak trees, we recorded whether or not the seedlings um, had the tops bitten off by cows and only about 10% of the seedlings had the tops bitten off. So our conclusion was that if none of the trees are reaching the you know overstory, it's not because the cows are eating all of them. We started the grant period running stalkers and yearling heifers and ultimately transitioned to cow-calf in the middle of the grant but our cows performed well, our cows kept weight well, our calving rates and weaning rates were good.
the way we view the economics is we're trading lower feed and land rent costs for increased labor costs. And we're always kind of looking at our financials and asking ourselves, is it worth it? Like, is it working out? Are we getting the better end of the exchange by putting in this extra labor? And generally, I think the answer is yes. We're young and energetic and have no problem walking around and putting a lot of electric fence on our ranches. Overgrazing is everywhere, and it's fairly well known that it's a function of time and not number of animals. So I think, you know, once, once we started kind of realizing that, then it was pretty clear that we should be, we should be trying it at least. Like for us, it all comes back to like, how can we do a better job? And what can we learn from this project that helps us do a better job managing these ranches? Mm -hmm.